In this lesson, we'll examine a small bit of history around Flash Professional, leading up to this present version of the application. So it all started with an application called Smart Sketch Future Splash that was made available in the 90s. This was technically the first version of what we now know as Flash Professional. It was a basic vector drawing application that was targeting tablets at the time. This evolved into a program called Future Splash Animator, which was released in 1995. It was a competitor to Macromedia Shockwave in that it was a vector animation program that was targeting the internet. Macromedia Shockwave files produced files for the internet, but they were actually quite large. Being a vector animation program, Future Splash Animator was able to make very small files for web consumption. Then we have Macromedia Flash 1. This happened when Macromedia acquired the software and rebranded it as Flash. It's basically the exact same program as Future Splash Animator, just rebranded for Macromedia. Then we have Macromedia Flash 2, released in 1997. It included a precursor to ActionScript, and this was basically accessible through a little actions dialog. You couldn't actually just write code in there. And it was geared toward timeline animations. So things like stop, play, things of that nature. The Flash library also made its first appearance in Macromedia Flash 2. Then we have Macromedia Flash 3, which was released in 1998. This included movie clip symbols. An independent timeline within these movie clip symbols made for a lot more power in the animations that were produced because it included things like nested animation. So you could have a timeline within a timeline within a timeline and be able to work independent of the root timeline that way. Macromedia Flash 4 was released in 1999 and the basic scripting support that it had before this was now branded as Actions. Notice this is still before even the first version of ActionScript was formalized. This scripting support called Actions included support for things like loops and variables and things that are basic programming concepts like that. This also included MP3 support, so able to play back MP3s which were becoming very popular around the turn of the century. In the year 2000, Macromedia Flash 5 was released, and Flash 5 included ActionScript, and now we call it ActionScript 1.0. It was only called ActionScript then because it was the only version available, and it was formalized with the release of Flash 5. It included a rudimentary code editor, and was very similar to JavaScript in that you don't have strong data typing, you can't have classes and things like that. In 2002, Macromedia Flash MX was released. It included support for the Sorensen Spark video codec, and also the RTMP protocol, which stands for Real-Time Messaging Protocol, and this is used for rich communications over the web. This is the beginning of video and rich communication that we see today. So without this version of Flash, we wouldn't actually have things like YouTube or even the HTML5 video tag today. 2004 saw the release of Macromedia Flash MX 2004, and it included support for ActionScript 2. So an upgrade to the language that allowed things such as class-based inheritance. This also included an interesting forms-based workflow which allowed people to create applications using what are known as forms instead of using the actual timeline in Flash. The reason for this is that people were starting to build applications in Flash instead of building simple web animations. And developers coming from a coding background didn't know what to make of the timeline. So they had this additional form structure they could use if they wanted to. In 2005, Macromedia Flash 8 was released. Note that this is the final version of Flash under Macromedia. It included such things as bitmap data APIs, filters, and blend modes. 
In 2007, we saw the release of Adobe Flash Professional CS3. And this is the first version of Flash under Adobe. So Adobe acquired Macromedia and integrated many of their products into the Creative Suite. Notably, this version was released with support for ActionScript 3.0, which is the version of ActionScript we still use to this day. It's a powerful, modern, object-oriented programming language and can be used for all sorts of different things. 2008 saw the release of Adobe Flash Professional CS4, which had a focus on animators and designers, including things such as inverse kinematics and pixel bender filters. In 2010, Adobe released Flash Professional CS5, which for the first time included some basic 3D, sometimes called 2.5D or postcards in space. It isn't true 3D, but it allows the simulation of 3D elements within the product. Also new sound APIs were introduced in ActionScript, and also peer-to-peer -peer APIs. There was a new text layout framework that was introduced that could be used instead of the classic text layout format. And notably with this version, it was the first version that came with the packager for iPhone, as it was called then, which allowed developers to create applications and games in Flash Professional and package them for the iPhone. In 2011, we saw Adobe Flash Professional CS 5.5 released. So this involved greater device support, enhanced code snippets, something called auto recover, asset caching, and content scaling. The most notable thing about this release is that it was actually released a year after Flash Professional CS5. And the reason for that is because of devices. So we have so much momentum behind devices getting better and better all the time and the runtimes themselves, especially Air, being used on all these devices, Flash Professional and other products needed an enhanced or more speedy release cycle to keep up with these things. So in this lesson, we've seen a bit of history around Flash Professional.